There are some seats down at the front. Should anyone need a seat? Hi, Neil. <laughs> okay. Good afternoon, and welcome to our Green BIM conference here at WSP. Um, delighted to have so many of you here with us, particularly delighted to welcome our guests who are staying for this week from Egypt, um, and also delighted to see so many uh, new faces here. This is the first time that we've brought together two of our networks for one conference, so we are um, bringing together Green Vision and Think BIM for this afternoon's conference. Um, just a few thanks um, to our sponsors. Thank you to Tecla and Graphisoft, without whom um, this would not be possible. And thank you to SIBSI, Chartered Institute of Building Services Engineers, who have kindly partnered with us on this event. So thank you very much, Simon and Mark. Here. Um, without further ado, I'm not going to say too much. If you would like to tweet and share any snippets of information from the conference, please feel free to do so. There is a Wi-Fi network for the conference. So the Wi-Fi network is ThinkBIM in capital letters, and the password is ThinkBIM, lowercase, and then capital B-I-M. Um, so please do use that, not the WSP guest. WSP guest will get bombarded. Um, other than that, all I have to do <laughs> is introduce our wonderful chair, Ben Warbank, who has told me not to read his biography because it um, just kind of goes on, apparently. Um, <laughs> but he has a wealth of experience in the construction industry. You're doing it anyway, aren't you? And above, all, <laughs> <laughs> and above all is a Think BIM ambassador and very supportive of all the work we do here at Leeds Beckett. So thank you. And I'll, I'll leave. Right, my, my <laughs> primary function as chair is to keep us to time, so Sorry. I'm doing unbelievably badly, so we're already 10 minutes late. Um, <laughs> so we'll do our best to catch up. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, but without further ado, um, we're going to go straight into our uh, first keynote speaker, um, who I seem to be meeting on a very regular <laughs> basis at the moment. Um, uh, Richard Lane is, um, it, so this is a government keynote speech. Richard Lane is a train, is he training and development officer and Implementation Project Manager for the UK BIM Task Group and Director of Cronova Consulting Limited. He is, the develop he is leading the development of the UK BIM Task Group training strategy and solution and is supporting the implementation of BIM in a number of UK government departments, including the Ministry of Defence and the NHS. With 25 years experience in IT consulting, project management and training, and leading global teams, Richard is a fellow of the Learning and Performance Institute and a professional member of the British Computer Society. As director of Cronova Consulting, Richard provides consulting, program and project management, change management and training services <laughs> to education, public sector and commercial organizations, specifically focusing on technology and construction sectors. The great thing about being chair is that you can read out all the stuff that you've asked not to be read out about yourself. So without further ado, Richard. Thank you. Wow, that was a, I think that introduction was almost as long as my presentation today. So, <clears throat> also gives away some element of my age talking about the 25, 26 years that I've been working now. But um, in that time, I, I've, I've really been focused on introducing change which adds value to organizations. But I don't think any of those changes have been significant or, or as potentially valuable as the introduction of Level 2 BIM within the UK. And as I have conversations with people about the BIM task group and the in introduction of Level 2 BIM, increasingly two questions surface. The first one is, are we nearly there yet? There's echoes of my kids behind me in the car when, when I put this up, but in, increasingly people are asking us, you know, are, are we there? Are we done there? Are we there yet? Are we able to say that we've completed the journey? Um, the other question that comes up quite regularly is, uh, will we meet the goal? Will we achieve the target of the introduction of Level 2 BIM by the 2016 deadline? 
And I think both of those questions are quite challenging and, and most answers will be fairly subjective and to some extent they rely on looking into the future um, and, and trying to understand what will happen in the next 18 months or so. Um, the question I think is, is more relevant and more pertinent is have we created the conditions for sustainable ongoing transformation? Have we put in motion a transformation within the UK, within the industry, that will see itself through to conclusion? And I think for that question, we're getting very close now. There are a few elements that are still to be delivered, that are still to be put in place. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about those shortly. Um, but we are reaching that point very, very soon, I think, where the transformation of fully introducing level two being within the UK will become a self-sustaining, uh, self-delivering uh, change. And as we're getting towards the end of this journey, we start to reflect back as a task group at the beginning. Um, you won't be able to read the detail of this, this that's fine. Um, when the original government BizBIM strategy was developed, um, there was a, a, a hypothesis developed and 10 tests to determine the successful uh, uh, implementation of level two BIM. And these are the different categories that were developed at the time. And, and for me, there are a couple of really important elements here which are critical to the successful implementation of BIM. The solution has to be understandable. People have to understand what Level 2 BIM is. And I think this is possibly one of those areas where we still have some more work to do. BIM is in, covered in acronyms and technical terminology um, it, it's difficult for non-technical people to engage with and understand not only <coughs> how to do it, but what it is in the first place. Definitions are in incredibly subjective and context specific as well. And I think part of what the government task group is focusing on over the next six to 12 months is, is really tackling that element of understandable. And alongside understandable, the other critical element, the critical test that we need to be successful in is valuable. BIM is not and should not be a change for change sake. It should be a change that introduces value across the industry and to our clients. And if BIM is understandable and valuable, then we're much more likely to introduce a successful, continuing, uh, ongoing change. I talked about varying BIM definitions and, and definitions being subjective and, and in the um, in the interest of understanding and understandable I wanted to give you uh, an insight into one of the definitions that I try to use uh, to describe BIM and I don't use typically technical definitions or definitions around standards or uh, documents but more a, a definition that's constructed around the acronym itself in the first instance, we're looking to build a consistent, collaborative <coughs> industry with clear and open communications. This talks to the behavioral, the cultural, and communications element of the change that we're trying to achieve. This is about <coughs> consistency in the technical ways in which we exchange information and communicate, but it's also about the ways that we can involve more people in the process using concepts like visualization to enable non-technical users to contribute to the design process. You'll, be, you'll see from that definition that I've used building as a, a verb rather than a noun. Um, and and what, one of the, the controversial elements, I think, of, of the BIM definition is for those people in infrastructure and civils uh, starting the acronym with the word building and the suggestion that it's purely for vertical assets and not for horizontal. For me, the B in building is, is a verb and it's a varied transformation within the industry. I think consistently regarded as the most important aspect of the acronym, information of high quality is procured to support business outcomes. For me, the most important element of this sentence is the last piece. The information that our clients are procuring and being delivered as part of a BIM project should have a purpose and an outcome. And too often in the early stages of BIM introduction, information is not clearly defined in terms of requirements and it randomly delivered. Um, that typically creates an overhead in the supply chain to put the information together. And if that information then subsequently becomes the data equivalent of shelfware, 
with no value and no purpose, then you introduce a cost on a project with no tangible benefits. By being clear and constrained and focusing on information that has a, a purpose or an outcome, we can minimize the incremental cost on a project but maximize the value. And then finally, moving into the more technical and technology uh, oriented aspects of the definition, modeling the design increases efficiency, enabling simulation and analysis. So, so we can operate in a more efficient, effective way, particularly through the design and development uh, of our assets, use, and using and maximizing the benefit from the tools and technologies available. There are a number of other ways of describing level two BIM. The documents are a key way. I think at the core is the 1192 set of standards. Um, part two covering capital, three for operational. Recently had part four, um, the, the description of information exchange satisfied by Kobe introduced. And recently announced uh, is part five, um, which will introduce security implications and requirements for BIM. Um, in addition to that, we have other key deliverables. Um, most notably, I think, in development at the moment is the digital plan of work and classification system, which was subject to a uh, what was a technology strategy board, now Innovate UK competition, um, uh, successfully awarded to Reba Enterprises and a consortium that they're operating, due for delivery in uh, April 2015. <coughs> And that in itself, I think, will help a lot when it comes to this um, measurement of understandable as we define level two. It will provide a, a web tool free to use for the end user um, that provides, I think, what normal looks like on a project. So for each of those project work stages, it will look at roles and tasks and objects to be delivered, including the level of geometric detail and the level of information um, the uh, definition um, that would typically be delivered for different components at different stages with the ability on an individual organizational project basis to customize that to the needs of the specific implementation. I think one of the challenges I see for clients at the moment is providing a good enough definition to the supply chain in terms of the information they need. And this I think will be a really useful tool in terms of not only describing that requirement, but also providing then a tool to test the compliance or the delivery of that information as requested. One of the other things that we're trying to do within the task group to clarify the definition of BIM and provide more information around understanding of BIM is what we call the learning outcomes framework. The first version of this was published two and a half years ago now I wasn't involved in that, but the authors must have had a, a really difficult job describing the learning needs around BIM prior to the development of most of the documents and standards that form our BIM level two definition today. So what we've done in the last uh, two to three months is revisit that definition of the learning outcomes, knowing um, what the, the standards and documents are and with a better understanding of what the implementation of BIM looks like. And we've created a, a fairly simple, high-level definition that educators, training providers, employers, and individuals can use to understand the functional scope of the knowledge and skills that they need to acquire in order to support Level 2 BIM. This is not role-specific, this is not level-specific, this is a generic scoping document that providers that can then take a map on specific roles or educational levels in order to create a specific outcomes um, framework for courses and, and uh, training programs. I expect that to be uh, published formally in uh, the next couple of weeks, certainly before Christmas, just waiting for some final comments, particularly around information security implications from the group developing PAS 1192 Part 5. Another thing that we're looking to do is revisit the BIM Task Group website. Um, it's already an invaluable source of information around Level 2 BIM, but it's grown up fairly organically and, and often it's, it's difficult to navigate and find the specific information that you need to answer your question. So we'll be publishing a new version 
of the task group website in the coming months that will be more intuitive, um, make it easier for you to find the information that you need. We're also establishing an, a community around BIM um, to sustain the conversation, communication and sharing of expertise around BIM into the future. This is part of our strategy to move into what we call legacy when the core BIM task group completes their activities and hands over the ongoing responsibility for the leadership of BIM transformation to a legacy organization and groups that support that. So we have a number of groups here, BIM4 groups. The BIM 2050 group recently published their report on the future of the industry. Um, we've got uh, new groups being formed like bim for health um, and I know some of you will be participating and in some cases leading the groups as they move forward. One of the critical things that we've done to secure uh, consistent delivery from these groups into the future is introduce a secretariat under the Chartered Institute of Building to oversee the development of those groups. Um, so these groups are signing up to a charter, they'll have their own terms of reference to ensure that there's a clear purpose and delivery and the ability to share information across of those specialist groups as well. <clears throat> In addition to that, we have obviously the um, BSI for the publication of the 1192 documents and the supporting standards that um, relate to that. Um, the work that's being done through Innovate UK to uh, support and invest in the development of, of solutions such as the Digital Planner Works through Reba Enterprise. We also have the BIM Stewardship Group, which is a community of government clients that meet on a regular basis to share experiences, um, lessons learned, and ensure consistent delivery of BIM across government. I guess the other thing that I should mention in closing, uh, there's a lot of focus on level two, quite rightly so at the moment. Um, it isn't the end of the journey. Uh, work is already ongoing on the definition of level three. Um, my message to you at this stage is don't be distracted by that. Be aware that this is not the end of the journey, but do not be distracted by level three. Um, it, it will be some time before that becomes a, an implementation issue within the industry. Um, but be mindful that this is part of an ongoing transformation to improve our industry, provide value to our clients and ultimately to society. Thank you very much. Um, thank you Richard. Um, I'm now going to welcome our second keynote speaker, James Amwell.